and welcome to another video on the Philosophical Weightlifting YouTube channel. Uh, this is kind of a follow-up in some respect to a video that I recorded with Sean Waxman, where we detailed the training of an intermediate level weightlifter. Um, I think this video is going to be different enough that it's going to warrant uh, a re-watching of the video with Sean and then a, a watching of this video because we're going to cover uh, programming for a weightlifter, but this time with um, quite a different spin. So whereas Sean and I, we were recording on a, a, a Google spreadsheet, um, Sergey has been uh, gracious enough to build out a pretty elaborate program and, and a pretty well-designed program that we're going to look over, we're going to talk through, and then we're going to detail the ways that um, he would, and the, the, obviously the business he works with, the programs, the, all of the programs they write, how they would write them, what goes into it. Uh, that way, one, you know what you're getting when you buy it and, and you're running the program, the, the amount of thought and detail that goes into it. But also if you want to write a similar program and you, uh, you've read some of the, the literature, uh, you've trained and you've ran some of the uh, programs online and, and you're wanting to either sharpen your skills or be able to write programs for other people or even for yourself, uh, you'll be able to do that. So hopefully this will act as a resource um, that you can revisit from time to time, almost like Bob Takano's books, almost like all the other books that exist. Um, and it's just another tool in the tool belt, so to speak. So without going on in the intro, um, Sergey, thanks for joining me. And the, the first thing we actually noticed is that we're both matching uh, with our Milwaukee barbell gear. Um, and, and we didn't plan this out. It just happens to be, it just happens to be great yeah, yeah. stuff. This is the truth. Didn't plan. So Sergey, maybe you can give us an update on, on how you've been, what you've been up to. I know it's been a crazy few months for you. Oh, uh, so last month, first of all, people, hi. Thank you for invitation and thank you for comparing with the Bob Takano's book and other author, authors. It's a big honor. Um, it's uh, well, the last two months were kind of interesting because finally I went again to the World Weightlifting Championship when I saw a lot of great athletes and uh, lifts live and finally met our friend Seb Ostrovich <laughs> because. Um, before I thought this is only a gallographic picture that he didn't exist only in YouTube, but he is real. <laughs> and um, he told me a lot of uh, nice stories and we had a great time. Uh, by the way, um, we spoke with a lot of guys even here in Ukraine who had the doubts to go or not to go to Uzbekistan because they uh, didn't understand for sure, will it, will this competition be good? How is uh, Tashkent look like? Will it be safe? Will it be interesting? But for all people who decided not to go, I will uh, say that in my life, this was the coolest event I ever attend at the world because I saw the heaviest lift with my eyes, like, I don't know, 10 meters in front of me, Lasha did snatch with four reds and uh, I mm, punched Steve Galwan <laughs> with my elbow and I said, I can't believe that I'm so happy can stand nearby with you and see that shit. It was like impossible. So the last two months were really incredible. And uh, if we will have time to discuss this, I also will be glad to share any information. Yeah, I, I guess before we get into kind of the the topic of the of the video and the actual programming itself, I would like you to maybe give. You talked about watching Lasha snatch two twenty five, uh, but what were some of the highlights for the trip uh, for you? You know, obviously meeting Seb was number one. Watching Lasha snatch two twenty five was number two. But what were what were some things that stick out um, that you thought were some of the the best performances or best parts of of the World Championship? I would like to outline that no matter what's going on, weightlifting is developing as a sport. I would like uh, to see uh, say that I see the new coaches, mm -hmm. younger coaches that are working and engaging into. Um, it's uh, cool stuff. I believe that um, dashboard of leaders uh, uh, is changing, are changing, and we see new countries, 
for example, um, uh, USA weightlifting. So with all respect and love, and this is true to American uh, athletes, I will tell you that from the Eastern um, region, before 2010, when people say like American weightlifters, everybody like, ah, ha, ha, okay, they, they are trying, okay. But now it's a very strong, nice, interesting team with uh, um, coaches which work from, all, uh, from, from open heart with the nice athletes which have uh, very interesting stories because when we took interview with uh, um, um, Maddie uh, Rogers and Meredith, one thing that amazed me very much, they both became on the top training online. Mm. And now it sounds like crazy because especially in the Soviet school, if you want to lift, you may, you must live forever only in the training camp, all team. And Meredith spent all preparation training online. She saw her coach once in a three, four weeks life. Same like girl from Canada who won Olympics, mm -hmm. all preparation to. So now it's not, it's, it doesn't sound now fantastic. It sounds like reality mm -hmm. that it can be, and people can lift heavy on, on real top mm -hmm. training on a distance with her coach. So it depends only on your motivation and your skills and how hard you work. Yeah, I think, well, what better way to have you introduce a program um, that we can talk through that people, if, you know, like I said, if they want to take um, the ideas and apply them, or if they want to, you know, purchase a similar program, they can do something similar. Um, so you can, you can essentially, um, you know, get one of these programs and then follow it to some degree at home, um, in your local club, in your, in your garage and rest well, knowing that it's, you know, well-designed and going to give you the best, um, the best chance at succeeding in weightlifting. So Sergey, maybe you can, um, share the program with us and then we can start talking through it. Um, yes, let's do this. Uh, so, uh, before I will, uh, open my screens, I will uh, share with you my uh, quote of my coach uh, that he always say that the, any training program, it's not a dogma. You know what is dogma, yes? Mm -hmm. yep. It's just a manual and this is the direction you follow because uh, when we um, do a design of uh, general programming, in our mind, we imagine like average kind of good looking athletes without major issues, he is quite harmonical and he is step-by-step uh, step going up. And uh, first of all, we need to understand that uh, it's uh, mostly impossible to find such a person because every person, every athlete has his own issues. So everything that I will share, it's not the one, the best and the only decision. It's the things that how we see the training program with Alexei, uh, Tarakti, because we did it together uh, sh uh, by sharing our ideas, a lot of disputes, sometimes even, um, like I said, I will not write this shit, and he said, come on, and then we found something in average, so we communicate sometimes kind of hard to make the best decision thinking about mm, um, about athletes, how to clarify the task better, so the program that uh, I would like to discuss uh, today is the comp competition male training program. It consists of 12 weeks and it has uh, three uh, connected cycles. Uh, depending on the literature that you study, it, you can call these uh, cycles with a different name. Uh, I called it by Zatsevorsky, like a general uh, preparatory cycle, then special preparatory cycle and competition cycles. Some, some people called it basic. Uh, in America, you called it um, uh, general then transmutation, yes? Or something yeah, like accumulation, this. transmutation. Accumulation, transmutation, transmutation mm -hmm. and then competition cycle. Uh, but realization, anyway, yeah. realization, exactly. So uh, depends on the school. The name can be different, but anyway, the system and theory of adaptation but by Hans Selye, he said that we need to have at least three weeks from three to five weeks of uh, kind of similar type of work with the variation inside to make our body change depending on the goals and the uh, and 
it's the same idea is in this program. So first of all, I would like to share your general numbers and I want you to think about this just like uh, about numbers, not like the truth and the only truth. It's, uh, it's the vision. So uh, blah, blah, blah. there we go. Yeah, here we go. A lot of complicated stuff. <laughs> uh, here we go. So uh, I will zoom. You see, yes? Yep, that looks perfect. Yeah. So uh, here, I think for mo most people understandable what is, what is here. We have uh, uh, 12 weeks. We have uh, numbers of lifts for every week and we have relative intensity for for this uh, cycle. This is a very simple numbers and uh, first I will speak about them and then I probably I, will, I show you uh, the pictures. Mm -hmm. So I would say that, you, uh, that during the general preparation and special preparation uh, cycle, we usually use something around from 1000 to 1200 reps if we calculate this lot from 50 percent and more because it's very common question from what percentage will calculate uh usually in uh national teams from soviet schools um we have calculation from 70 percent and uh we have reports of load from 70 percent and um this is um we see that picture in professional weightlifter because professional weightlifters mostly familiar with the proper warm-up on the lower percentage mm. the thing that we can met in the amateur weightlifting when people came to the gym they take a bar and if they see in the plan that uh, first set is on 75 percent after the bar the next weight will be 75 percent <laughs> This is the problem, and uh, um, I cry with the blood from my eyes. But that is why when we draw the program, when we design the program, we usually pay attention that, guys, please, 50%, please, 60%. That is why I pay attention to that these numbers. So, for example, in this cycle, it will be something around 100. Uh, oh, I'm sorry, like this. 1,000, uh, almost 200 uh, reps. This is counting from 50%. Uh, uh, here is the same, like almost 1,200. And uh, in the competition cycle, the general volume will be about 30% less, 30% mm -hmm. le uh, less. And this is the drop that we can do to bring uh, the body to the super compensation phase. And if we will- can I jump yeah. in and ask you a question? Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. I I know that, and, and you even mentioned it, different schools will calculate reps from different percentages and up. So um, it's my understanding that there have been schools that will, uh, and I think Puros Demas might have even said this, but from 80% and up, those are the reps that matter to him or the school he came from. Um, I know Greg Everett from Catalyst, 70% and up is, is what he, he counts. Uh, Spencer Arnold, uh, and sorry, I'm just using American coaches, but these are the ones that I know mind. all of them. Yeah, I know all of them. And then, so, so Spencer, 60% and up, and then you say 50% and up, and, and you gave a reason for it. Um, is there any bigger difference besides the warm up that we would see if we're calculating from, say, 50%? 60%, 70% or 80%. Is there a way you would kind of direct people just to, to at least get started? So uh, in my mind, uh, lifts that um, build our shape, build our result, of course, mm -hmm. start after 70% and up. But lifts uh, uh, on the level of 50, 60%, how we explained to the beginners, it's the way when you are able actually to control, mm -hmm. adjust and shifts your center of the balance, feel your elbow. So it's not an empty bar but it's already weight that kind of load all your system. But in the same time, you are able to um, change something. So I will explain you how it works in practice uh, when uh, national team train. So usually chief coach, he uh, didn't start to look at you before you will go to 70%. Mm. And that is why he said, okay, 
so if training session starts at 4, uh, 3.40, you must be in the gym. At 4 o'clock, you must take the bar. At 4.25, we start to lift. We start to lift, you means you hit your first 70% uh, set. So what happens before, it's, it's your time to feel, to adjust mm. that. And uh, a lot of uh, athletes who didn't know that, they believe that uh, when they hear, for example, Dimas, that 70 or 80% and more means a lot. They said, I will skip all that shit. This is for losers and I will do a real stuff. And um, sometimes people just don't know what is the meaning of warm up. Mm -hmm. And it means a lot, I believe. Yeah, I, that's honestly the best answer I've heard. Because again, you know, and, and this is just having spoken to other coaches who do this. Um, usually they say that they count those reps because that's what they've been taught or that's what their coach did or that's what a certain school did or does. Um, so to hear you actually explain it like that helps me almost rethink like why I calculate the, the reps that I do. So I, I appreciate that. So um, thanks for I that. I also would like to, I thank you. I also would like to add that um, um, when we teach coaches and when we explain that coach is the person who always must have doubts and must have think because mm. co co uh, have to think be uh, because when you coach and you want to develop yourself, you, you must always ask yourself why. Mm -hmm. And uh, to my opinion, the worst answer, because my coach did like this or because this school do that. Probably you have no idea why they did that right. because they believe in another God. So I, uh, I think if we have a doubt, you need to ask or yourself or someone else, mm -hmm. why? Why? Physiologically, pedagogically, logically, why? Mm -hmm. Because it's supposed to have any sense. And uh, uh, thank you for touching this topic because I believe that for if you want to coach, you probably need to follow any questions that you don't know the answer mm -hmm. to find it. Because during the years of coaching, probably you will change your mind. Mm -hmm. But anyway, you will look for the answer. Yeah. So let's go forward. Mm -hmm. um, um, so these numbers that I spoke so as, as we spoke with you before, we will go from mac macro to uh, micro, mm -hmm. micro or micro? Micro. So macro, it's a big, and micro? Uh, macro is big, micro is small. Micro, yeah, yep. yeah, because it's the spelling issues. Mm -hmm. So if we will look at these numbers on the two diagrams, I um, spread it, we can see that, um, if we speak about the, so blue is volume, right is intensity. We can see that from the week one to week four, uh, very, uh, by the very strange accident, volume is going down. Mm -hmm. And um, I will explain why it makes sense. First, the first and quick answer, because intensity go up. Mm -hmm. And because here we actually start with the, with the kind of, one of the highest volumes of all the training cycle. Mm. So you can see that one more uh, high volume we will meet at the week five and then on the week seven. So, and uh, I would say that we give here a lot of um, reps and exercises with the kind of low, uh, low intensity just to um, do a, I would say, pressure on total. Um, body uh, muscle system mm -hmm. to engage uh, the system in the high um, um, volume work but in the same time if we speak that this is a general preparation cycle and we just prepare our body for actually um, um, actually stress and work uh, here we do 1,200 reps, but in the same time, uh, the volume go down. So week four actually will be recovery mm. because after this, people will start to suffer. And that is why if we will combine these two lines, blue and red, we will see this picture, uh, how it looks like in instruction. So our general preparation cycle look like this. Uh, I, I would say that strategies can be very different, mm. but this is how we decided to start our general preparation cycle. And I will explain to you also why we did this. It's not uh, my uh, silly imagination. This is from Medvedev book. Mm -hmm. You can see this, yes? 
So uh, I will give you this uh, slide from my um, presentation about this uh, Soviet me methodology because very often people can ask why volume goes this way. So from the um, early, not early, from the 80th, um, it was a mathematically proven uh, numbers that gives the best distribution of volume that help people to adapt and this is these four numbers that in total will give you 100% for a month volume. So 35, 28, 22, and uh, 15. So I would say that 35, it's a big volume, 28, it's a bigger than average, 22 average and 15 mm -hmm. slow. And there is a six type of variation of the load that you can use um, and you will be mathematically right when you will combine these slots, no matter what um, amount of reps you decided to use, like 800, 1000, 2000. And we can see that there is a six main strategies. When volume go down, volume go up, uh, it uh, peaking on the second week, on third week, or it will go like this mm -hmm. with the two different variation. You see this, yes? Mm -hmm. Yep. So six option. And um, regarding to this law, the all training program was uh, built. So on the week, uh, on the cycle number one, from week one to four, you saw this line when the volume went down. And that is why we had a chance to move the intensity up. Mm -hmm. If we will see, uh, so we will do a short break. Josh, is it looks good? Everything's fine? Yeah. I mean, how? Don't uh, hesitate to break me. Okay. Yeah, no, everything's great. I'm, I'm learning a lot, actually. And I will open, for example, uh, actual week number two mm -hmm. from the training program, and we will take a look on it. Uh, so first of all, I believe that uh, from week one to week four, when a general preparation cycle, we need uh, to have not only weightlifting training, but uh, also a kind of big volume of GPP. Mm -hmm. Because uh, once again, from the book of physiology, we can understand that during this uh, four, three, four, five weeks, depending on our um, timing, we need to um, pay attention to our small muscles, ligaments, stabilizers, and so on and so on. And all type of prehab that we're able to do, it's better to do in this period and not when we will have 90% uh, lifts because during that period, everything will be will hurt any, <laughs> um, anyway. So just to uh, pay your attention to that during uh, this uh, um, period, we have kind of big special warm up when we pay attention to Superman variation, when we pay attention to the variation of planks, variation of uh, jumps, and uh, a lot of uh, PVC drills work. And I would like to pay your attention to this because I understand that most of athletes, especially when they became like advanced level, they became too lazy for do this silly and useless shit <laughs> but um the problem is that when you are from 19 to 23 mm -hmm. you or 22 you feel yourself like a superhero and it seems to you that you can do everything and that it will last forever but as soon as you became like older from 23 and older and it's real age for real kilos a lot of athletes, they just quit because they have too many injuries. Mm -hmm. And for coaches, it's very important to explain for the kids in the age of 15, 16, 17, that if you will do now this light style, easy technical and coordinational work, probably you'll stay alive after. And so just a funny example. Recently, I uh, spent some time with my coach and he trained uh, junior and under 23 national team. And uh, he asked me like, can you help me to do some uh, good uh, GPP work that will be useful for weightlifters? I said, easy, take a 
um, two kilo plate, like two kilo. And can you show me uh, one leg Romanian deadlift, not, not Romanian deadlift, one leg muscle snatch. So mm -hmm. just touch the floor with the plate and full extension with the straight arms. Like zero athletes will be able to perform it for eight reps. <laughs> I said, I, 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 are you like kidding me? Because half of them just fall out Mm -hmm. And half of them said that glute hurt so much that someone <laughs> put a needle inside. And they said, you asked me how you want to protect your hamstrings and lower back. Right. This is it. Right. This is like the most useful exercise. And he said, okay, we saw that um, uh, Chinese doing a uh, handstand push up mm -hmm. and the two athletes hold them and they do this. I, and, and we will do this now. I said, they do it because they did gymnastics and they can hold this position. Mm -hmm. Because when our guys started to do this, their abs looked like this. <laughs> and, he, and he said, I heard that this is for shoulder protection. In this technique, it will not work. Mm -hmm. So uh, my advice during week number one to four, if your preparation lasts over 10 weeks, pay attention a lot. So mm -hmm. prehab everything that you can prehab and all your weaknesses. Mm -hmm. This is the time when you can work on that. And if you will take a look attentively at uh, this training, uh, uh, this training um, uh, days, you will see that most of exercise here are complex. So mm -hmm. something plus something. You can see that there is no intensity over even. 80%. Mm -hmm. And uh, you can see that uh, most exercises, I would say, you perform uh, it from inconvenient or, or unusual positions. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is the general idea, my opinion, this is general idea of the um, general preparation cycle, when you have to put your athlete to the inconvenient position mm -hmm. just to help his coordination and his muscle to start adapt to make them stressed but not because of weight mm -hmm. <clears throat> uh, not because of density but of position and yeah. i would outline once again that this is not the final decision mm -hmm. if you understand that for your athlete there is a problem of holding angle probably you shouldn't do it from the mm, block but you should do it from the hang and with impact on the eccentric work, because mm -hmm. recent, even mm, during this world, um, I said this story to Seb. Um, I, I had a chance to take a first interview to the Ruslan Norodinov. Mm -hmm. And as far as we are friends, I said, what the fuck with your snatch again? <laughs> and he said like, uh, it was right after drug testing procedure. And he said, I want to kill myself. I don't know what's going on because I put so many effort on fixing all my issues mm -hmm. and on the platform, all my issues came back. Mm. And uh, no matter that he is like world record holder, Olympic champion. So it's for everybody. You should know that even top athletes, they have issues and they regret so much about them and they work, but sometimes just difficult so uh, yeah idea well I, I do have a question and that was a great story by the way and i think stuff like that allows people to feel okay when they do don't do well at comp a, a competition because you know and I've, I've seen this plenty of times someone has a great preparation they look they look awesome going into it they go out for their opener and suddenly it's like a completely different lifter is out there moving the barbell and it kind of gets in their head a little bit and, and it's, it's hard to come back from, um, and hearing Ruslan talk about that. It, I think that'll help soften the blow a little bit, but as far as exercises that you think help the lifter figure the movement out or the technique out, are there certain variations that you think, uh, so say uh, someone wants to write this program and they're working on some 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 of the aspects of the technique. Are there certain exercises that help people uh, produce the correct technique without needing a ton of coaching? So, for example, um, sometimes you'll see a lot of people use like a no contact muscle snatch that works certain aspects of the pole, um, specifically the second pole that people might struggle with. 
Uh, are there other variations that tend to help people correct problems without like a ton of coaching or hands-on work, given that, you know, sometimes we'll have, like you mentioned with Maddie or Meredith, uh, them training entirely online and then having to kind of figure things out for themselves a little bit. Uh, so I would share my point of view. So once again, let's imagine uh, kind of ideal athlete in the vacuum. And um, our goal is to build the flow, how he will build his shape. Mm -hmm. So I believe that easier for body when we speak about uh, uh, clean and snatch is to build the shape from top to bottom. Mm -hmm. So for example, in most schools, when you start the preparation and you can see this, even in this program, you mostly start to work with the hang position because amplitude is um, shorter mm -hmm. it's very common to work from hang to the for example power snatch mm -hmm. because again here you develop position during the eccentric work how to build correct angles in the power position when you do power snatch in the same time you build the habit to do full extension mm. So uh, this is what we should uh, keep in our mind. So um, in the same, if we uh, speak about the dynamic and explosive exercises, in the same time, you know, when we speak about strength accessory exercises, we should follow, uh, on my opinion, two aspects. First is the right positioning and angles. And the second, the same important is strength. Mm. If our goal is to work with the bigger weights, it's logically to work with the shorter amplitude, but with the bigger weights. Mm -hmm. I just gi give you the general approach. Mm -hmm. But in the same time, if our goal to focus more on the correct movement, probably you need to do lower weights. But in the same time, if you want to increase intensity or time under tension, probably you can engage some position in the static mode, uh, means poses in the middle, beginning, end, or your weak parts. Mm -hmm. Because the thing that I was, um, so do you know that um, Erzaz Baltaev now is the chief, chief coach of Ukraine, mm -mm. the coach of Ilya Ilyin? Oh, yeah, so yeah, yeah, I saw that. Yeah, so he signed the contract in the December. So uh, one of the exercises that national team started to do, they uh, started to do now when it's preparation cycle, a lot of front and bent back squats with the pauses, mm. with the slow down and fast up. And also they started to do um, a back squat and front squat in the same time. So you mm. do back squat for triple, put the bar on the rack, rear racket and front squat. Mm. So, and uh, when you put, for example, 75% of your front squat and you, you need to do three plus three back and front, it, it's killing people. It's like killing. <laughs> because first, when you take the uh, training plan, it looks like a stupid and very easy stuff. When you start to do this, you're dead. So... <laughs> And uh, so just to conclude the approach to the week one to four, uh, as I said, complex exercises mm -hmm. and uh, finishing answering your question, my opinion to build the correct movement, starting from the shorter amplitude, making sure that you are comfortable with this amplitude, you understand mm -hmm. that you are uh, doing everything well and then increasing amplitude. Mm -hmm. And the idea about no feet or no power position, snatch or clean, it's also a idea of making exercise like more simple mm -hmm. and uh, more strength and then engage in explosive elements. So this is not actually from weightlifting, that's from pedagogy, mm. because pedagogical approach of teaching, you have standard mode of teaching, uh, teaching with a uh, more easy environment and teaching with more difficult environment. And you have these three methods and it's only in your mind how to combine, depending on the issues or peculiarities of your athlete. Yeah. Perfect. And then uh, you kind of mentioned uh, 
at the start of this that the volume is going to actually go down and the intensity is going to go up so yes. week four is going to be the heaviest week but also the lowest volume week is that correct uh yeah now you can see the numbers and you will understand for yourself uh what's going on so i would say that everything that uh above uh 320 lifts it's difficult for people no mm -hmm. matter what intensity it's going on and we can see that uh, uh intensity from week one to week four is going up then it will drop uh, on the week five and uh, in, uh volume will drop on the week four so mm -hmm. Once again, uh, this is the theory, and uh, we don't know how the whole team will eat this volume. Mm -hmm. But in the th I believe in numbers, and I believe that they works. And uh, when I plan, I try to recalculate the distribution between um, between intensity and the volume, so it can help people to um, recover, but not to die. But uh, this is the picture that we can see here. So mm -hmm. from well, uh, intensity go a hey, intensity uh, go up, mm. volume go down, and then from week five we start a real training. Here okay, and, and, and here. then with the volume, the I guess the before we kind of move on, the last question I would mm -hmm. have is, mm -hmm. what exactly goes into the volume in terms of the reps like what exercises very nice question so uh, let's drop here i think this um this scale will be uh, informative to you so what we calculate in the actual like main volume mm -hmm. it's all uh snatch exercises with power position all mm. clean exercises with power position we calculate uh, separately clean and jerk all pulls and all squats so uh once again depending on school some schools calculate some school doesn't calculate we didn't put in the calculation everything that without power position and everything that below 70 percent for example push press mm -hmm. it's uh it's uh, exercise without jumping or explosive stuff but if it's go uh, above the 70 percent we need to put it somewhere mm -hmm. just to make sure that you calculate this lot and in this case it will go to the uh, snatch exercises and for example how the most boring calculation looks like so i would say we, we saw the week two so the week two looks like this we uh, have a lot of work in the intensity zones for athletes like 50 60 you can see it's like almost 60 percent of everything that happens mm -hmm. so snatch clean jerk and pulls and squats are in a little bit heavier intensity zones and then i usually calculate all numbers together and then i calculate the relation between the groups of exercises and then relative intensity so yeah, yeah. so it's kind of boring if you are not <laughs> professional but i just give uh, i will try to give picture uh, like real picture how we build this because it's um, for me personally for me designing training program it's not like okay today it will be three sets of six <laughs> reps it doesn't work like this now uh, i usually try to um, so i have my understanding or imagination what will be but then i calculate recalculate because i understand that these numbers it's my responsibility for the not only for result but the human health as well yeah, and, and and just to kind of touch on that point, I, I said the same thing when Sean uh, did the video with me, is every time I watch a coach go through their process, I'm all, I always realize that I have something that I can work on, something that, that I can improve on. Um, because like I, I, I calculate a good bit of stuff, I kind of try to plan it out, but I've, I've never set up a table like this and been able to track things over zones and then how the percentages play into that. Um, so I guess, thank you for showing me what I could work on and improve on. Um, so this is like a different dynamic of it. 
so uh, to move uh, forward, mm -hmm. one more very important uh, numbers that I believe are useful uh, for coaches, it's uh, uh, percentage and relation of volume in the group of exercises that are actually give us result. Mm -hmm. And there are uh, two main group. It's a group of uh, competitive exercises that all snatching exercises, all cleaning, jerking and clean and jerk. And uh, another group, it's pulls and squats. Mm. And uh, uh, simple understanding how uh, we supposed to distribute volume between these two groups, it's that ideally, uh, snatch plus clean plus jerk supposed to count as a 50% mm. and um, uh, pulls plus quads also supposed to count uh, also 50%. I will show you uh, like a good uh, from presentation, a good, let me find where is it? Um, yes. Okay, like this. So this is the volume distribution once again by book and by Medvedev. Mm -hmm. And uh, I always uh, teach my colleagues and share experience that I believe that when we calculate a week, a month and the cycle in the end of the calculation, we supposed to meet the picture like this. Mm. And uh, why I explain this because very often, even today, I got a message in Instagram from the guy that uh, from United States, like, please, can you take a look at my training week? I need your advice. I said, yes, of course. And uh, after he sent me his uh, uh, paper in two minutes, he texted me again. That, so I said, I am sorry, I'm not able. I'm, I'm not this guy. I'm not <laughs> able. Uh, I'm not able to take a look and said that you are perfect or you are ugly. I, I just, I need to calculate. And I believe that uh, by the end of our designing or our training structure should look like this. So you can see that snatch and clean and jerk supposed to have about 50% plus minus mm. five and snatch pulls also need to have this. And uh, the only logic that we should follow that when we have a uh, preparative cycles this could be a bit more and this could be a bit less. And when we go to competitive period, this supposed to be less and this supposed to be uh, more. And uh, this is just for understanding how it lives. But um, anyway, it's supposed to be somewhere here because when I can see someone training program and I calculate and I can see that snatch 7%, clean and jerk 11%, but we have 40% of clean pool, 20% of snatch pool and the same amount of um, squat. I said, you are doing good weightlifting, but actually it's powerlifting weightlifting. <laughs> and uh, to realize this, you need to calculate. And mm. uh, then when we go back to the actual numbers of uh, to the training program, that we are speaking about when we can see that here, when we have general preparation cycle, mm -hmm. we have a little bit above the 20% uh, for a snatch and clean and jerk. For mm -hmm. clean and jerk, it will be more because it's two exercises. When we have from week five to week eight, we have more pulls and more mm -hmm. uh, squats. And finally, when we go to the competition stage, you can see almost 30% for uh, snatch, a little bit over 30 clean and jerk and pulls we cut and uh, squats, it remains almost the same. Yeah. So I do, the same I, in the graph. I do have two, so I have two questions. Um, okay. One would be, the, the, the first question would be why the focus on the snatch, clean and jerk, um, the first, block like block or, or, or uh cycle and then you said that the um, or, or sorry you said that the focus changes from block to block and that in the middle you do um just trying to think of my question um okay i understand your because question. generally so it would be like more squats more poles 
about the about an equal amount and then it would be more snatch clean and jerk less squats less pulls and it mm -hmm. would generally have more strength uh, kind of like a moderate amount and then less strength and this, this is just slightly different from what i'm used to seeing okay so i will explain so first of all let's take a look uh on uh, cycling like this that this is preparation mm -hmm. this is competition so you're supposed to see here not three blocks you're supposed to see here two blocks gotcha. preparation competition okay number one so number two uh if we will say that this is the preparation stuff inside of uh this uh preparation block we have two peculiarities here we work with the less intensity but with more complex exercises and uh here the difficulty because most exercises are complex and uh, this volume actually is uh way bigger than this mm -hmm. and uh so here more complex pauses eccentric so where people suffer because of uh, sick exercises and here people suffer because uh the same amount of volume but more intensity mm. so this is the difference and uh um, you mentioned that uh, in my slide it was neo yes from metrics yeah so i believe that for us for coaches we're supposed to see not just the numbers as a um, as a digit we're supposed to see some meaning in these numbers. Right. That is why I'm trying to explain that here, we try to adapt and stress body with the different instruments. And here, as you say in um, American methodology, here is a realization. Mm -hmm. So this is how I see. Okay, and then the, kind of the idea is that you're providing stress and then you're, you're showcasing what you've developed um have you noticed because the the squats stay relatively consistent over time um and you know and, and the pulls really are the only thing that change it, it, during that competition block mm -hmm. um is there a reason why the percentage of the squats tend to stay relatively the same is it is it an exercise that when you re remove too much volume and in you know a caveat for everyone watching this is just one program so the questions might not make a lot of sense you know because if we saw 100 programs things might look different um but my question for this one is like why would the squats stay relatively similar across time um at, at least for the volume distribution uh, uh the answer is like this uh so here you can see the um, percentage and when we um, speak about uh, when we speak in percentages it's always relative numbers mm -hmm. but right. when we train and we live on the earth with the gravity we calculate everything in kilos and in reps and right. now let's keep in mind that here is minus 30 percent of load Mm -hmm. So the, the relation between this um, uh, load inside of competition cycle will be almost the same because we need to keep toned muscle and keep intensity. But it's very good that you said that because now when we will open, for example, preparation cycle two, mm -hmm. and we will see that total amount of squats. Did you see this? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So total amount of squats uh, in the week uh, five to week eight was 273 reps. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And in the competition week, amount of uh, squats was 187. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it was a good question because people will mention that it's almost the same in percentage, but mm -hmm. in lifts, again, it's over 30 percent less of reps and repetition and sets mm -hmm. Th yeah that that makes sense um okay cool and then i guess so we looked at like a general preparation week um and then maybe we could look at a, a special yeah. preparation week and then move into the competition let's go so let's uh open for something like something like week number uh six or seven let's go for week number uh seven let me check what it was by numbers yeah it's kind of big week that's a big week yeah it's a big week 
and uh, I yeah, and there is a some uh, and after this we will speak about the distribution of load inside of the week. Uh, so uh, week uh, uh, from special preparation stage, what is the um, what is the peculiarity of uh, this period in uh, general? Uh, so the idea of special preparation stage when we work uh, with the exercise, with the dynamic exercise, um, more or less dissimilar with the structure of competitive exercises. And here during the training week, you can see snatch from blocks. Usually when I say in my mind snatch from blocks, it's a blocks below the knees mm. we can see here clean we can see here snatch we can see clean and jerk and we can see the uh, power snatch and most uh, uh, pools are uh, traditional and uh, squats as well so mm. there is no posing squats there is no slow or narrow feet or uh, anything else so uh, during this period people mostly suffer or suffer you you understand yeah. what i'm saying <laughs> yeah uh, mostly people suffer because of uh, kind of high intensity mm -hmm. and with the big volume of work when your goal here is just to um, do uh, kind of monotonic but very difficult work so i remember from my uh um, career and when we stayed at this period of training uh, coach always told me that even when you go to the gym and you already came to the gym and you're already tired he said you just need to uh, be patient to live to the end of this day no matter what's going on so you shouldn't look for the passion look for the feeling yourself great or uh, feeling yourself um, fast or a good in technique you just need to do your work mm -hmm. and uh, actually this is the um, uh, good example of what Dimas said, mm. that when you work from 80% and more, you actually shouldn't think about the, you, you are not able, uh, to my opinion, to think a lot about the quality. You just mm. need to do your job. Sometimes mm. there are good sets, sometimes there are bad sets. And when you are tired, when you are under load and coach said, okay, 85%, three sets of two, you just, and you understand that you need to eat this load. Mm. And after the tapering, maybe your shape will be good. And uh, this is the period when you should be mentally ready to be always, let's say the truth, in pain, tired, and do your job. And here, especially in this program, you can see this uh, green um, uh, green spots. In this program, it means that this is the optional lot. Mm. And, uh, and uh, uh, it, it happens kind of often with the top athletes when a coach said, okay, in my planning, I see today something in between 87 to 92%. So I see this. And I see ideal plan five sets, but you must do at least two. Mm. And then you have these uh, uh, borders and you understand that you will be the best if you will perform everything, but at least you need to do your minimum. And uh, I believe that even when we have a general plan, we're supposed to give uh, athletes an option because athletes need to understand that they need to rely on their feeling and there is a minimum of work that they must do, but optimum of work they need to do only if they feel optimal. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, that, that makes sense entirely. And uh, one question I would have, this, this is more of a, like a broad question, um, and maybe you could just provide a reference or a few references for it, but how, so you talked about how you calculate the total number of reps, the percentage of, of that reps per week, but as far as distribution over the percentages, you say in a, a, a training plan, how are you saying, or where are you, where are you getting the information that says you should have this much work at 70%, this much work at 80%, this much work at 90%, like, how are you, like, what do you use as a, a reference to calculate that stuff? So when it comes out, 
um, you know, you have say a bunch of sets at 80% and then you have one set at 85, one set at 90. So why, you know, why that decision? Uh, the answer is like this. I have the answer. I'm not sure if you will be satisfied with this answer, but I have it. And once again, it's not the thing that it's not the things that I found. It's the it's the science and like this. Okay. So uh, everything again goes from math, mm -hmm. and uh, probably you heard from math that there is a law of normal distribution mm -hmm. of everything on Earth. And it uh, works again uh, in uh, sports science as well. Mm -hmm. So Zatsyorsky made this table. It's written in Russian because it's by Zatsyorsky. But anyway, you can uh, guess what's written here. So below we have intensity zones. It's mm -hmm. from track and field approach. And uh, only in weightlifting, we have uh, intensity zone 100 plus. Mm -hmm. In um, uh, track and field, it doesn't exist. But what Zatsyorsky said, that all training work actually distributes, distributes at, as a mm. uh, norm, a law of normal distribution. And this is how uh, physiology of human work because we are live on the earth and everything on earth is math. Uh, so so this is the quick answer mm -hmm. and probably mm -hmm. now you will understand what will be the, the next so uh, one more important stuff that i always mention uh during my lectures and we already spoke about this and about demons and so on so in our school our coaches always said that everything that from 70 to 90 it's a training zone mm -hmm. when you train your result when you train your muscles uh, everything that below is warm up where you are able anything to set up to change to feel after you did the setup okay let's work and everything that above 90 percent it's not about training it's, it's about control i mean testing mm. so control maybe it's not the right word but we called it control zones so testing zones so everything about testing you can test your technique you, in a stress environment you can tr test your psychology you can test your muscle mm -hmm. but actually you if you will test yourself too much the only thing that you will get or you will get a positive result about your preparedness or will you break yourself because if you spend too much time in the red zone obviously that bad things will happen mm -hmm. no one competes every day but we compete in the red zone so this is the quick answer how i would say i know how much uh, reps I supposed to spend in the intensity zone. And then if we will go deeper in the theory and we will go further, mm -hmm. once again, from Aleshko Science, uh, we have the table that says how it's better to mm -hmm. spend a lot in the intensity zones according to the, as I said, uh, law of normal distribution. It looks like this. And then we can uh, get the same information according to the weight classes, mm -hmm. because we already know the peculiarities of physiology and the gravity to the different weight classes. Mm -hmm. If you are taller and you have to lift more weight, mm -hmm. that is why you will spend more time because you need to lift on more distance. And that is why you spend more calories and you will tire it faster. That is why you're unable to eat such a big amount of volume. Does it make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So again, if we will take a look at this uh, table, we will see that, and we will, for example, take a look at the uh, intensity uh, zone from 91 to 100. We can see that theoretically, lightweight guys can do in this intensity zone mm -hmm. about three and a half times more of volume than heavyweight guys. And uh, um, if we speak about how I can start design my training program, of course, my advice, you, can, you should take a pen, paper, and start to write, like mm -hmm. snatch 60% resets to reps. But if you take a responsibility to plan a cycle, for example, for your friend, and you love this guy, and you don't want to put the flowers on his grave, <laughs> Probably you need, after you will design everything, to check your assumption 
on the test and numbers. Mm. Probably these numbers will help you to say that, okay, if his body weight 100 kilos, but you already plan 20% um, of all volume in the 90%, 90 and more, probably you need to cut it a little bit because mm. you love your friend. So this will help you to check yourself. And, uh, and then after, when you have experience and you understand, okay, because uh, when we build average plan, we build it somewhere in the average. That is why we always write that keep in mind, feel yourself and cut it if you feel that it's too much. But this is the answer how I find out how many sets and reps I need to spend in this zone or in that zone. And then I distribute it between the group of exercises. And then are you distributing it based on, based on the size of the, of, or the amount of volume within the week? So if, if there's like a big chunk of volume, are you doing less, you know, 91 to 100% lifts or how are you kind of like plotting those in there and, and dictating that it's like the right time to do 90 plus percent? Uh, uh, thank you for this question. First of all, we have a goal of our preparation, lift more. Mm -hmm. Then we spread it to the cycles and we have goal of every cycle. So question for our, um, for our coaches and for our athletes who will listen to us, how we will understand what lifts we need to put more 70%, 85 or 90, depending on the goal of this cycle. Mm -hmm. If it's general preparation cycle, I would rather add more volume for 60, 70%. But if I want to make this work more intensive, I would add time under tension. Mm -hmm. I will put it to the inconvenient position but I will try to help him to build the muscles with the lower intensity. Mm -hmm. Then when I understand that he did his work for three, five weeks, then he had this period of adaptation. Then I can move forward for 80% from week five to week eight. This is my logic. Mm -hmm. Yeah, great answer. That's very insightful. Um, Cool. And then, and then we can look at say a, a, a competition period and look at like now when this stuff is all laid out and we're trying to put the best performance on the platform, what that would look like. So let's go, for example, to the week 10. Mm -hmm. uh, so you can uh, see even without understanding the what's going on, that blocks are look shorter. Mm -hmm. So more, more black space. And, and so, maybe, maybe even before we get into the actual numbers and, and, and exercises, could you, and you've, you've gone through many programs, you've trained a lot. You, I mean, you, you, you were a, a competitive weightlifter for, for a long span of time. How should someone feel as the training blocks go on? So say within this 12 weeks, there's a general, there's a special preparation, and then there's the competition preparation. Would the athlete feel different as, you know, the, the training weeks start to go on? You mentioned, you know, during this period, maybe you're a little more uh, in pain, you're a little more beat up, um, but you're going to put out the best performance. Whereas maybe, you know, when you're, when you're in the highest volume weeks, you're also going to feel pretty run down. So what's like the general kind of progression of, of how an athlete should feel as they're going through a program? Thank you for this question. So, um... I don't remember who said this, not Kelly Starrett, but someone, someone from this uh, line of scientists. And he said that uh, for a professional coach, uh, every training is assessment. Mm. So no matter what's going on, um, uh, I think it's the founder of Great Institute. Okay, doesn't matter. Uh, so um, uh, when you coach, and or when you're an athlete who has experience, you can test yourself mm -hmm. um, by doing the exercises. Uh, and I believe that this is the best testing. Of course, I believe in science and in instrumental different type of testing. Um, but uh, going from cycle to cycle, we need to um, like conclude um, what is the um, summary of week one from week one to week uh, four. 
and uh, by the end of the uh, week four, we need to uh, see that um, uh, uh, regarding, uh, so let's go from the very beginning, uh, answer, uh, answering this question. Uh, I believe that uh, the one of the easiest and the most inform informative test when you train systematically and, and you uh, train semi-professional, you mean you follow your day routine, nutrition, everything is right, is your body weight. Mm. If you do everything right and you see that your body weight stable or going up, it means that actually you at least not overtrain. Mm. If, you, if you see that you did everything well, but uh, after the work, your weight constantly going down, question for the quality of your recovery. If uh, you, your meals are fine, if your sleeps are fine and uh, your weight is going down, it means the catabolism is ruining you, question why. So maybe you do uh, everything over because if uh, your weight is going uh, down for a few days after stress work workout, it's fine. But if you mentioned that from week to week, it's going down like 30, uh, 300, 40, 100 grams, it means that you feel yourself bad, but be because some people, they just can feel it uh, physiologically. So um, my answer is that anyway, doing the hard work, you should feel that your strength technique from some certain position getting better mm. because if the goal of the week uh, one to four develop your strength endurance by the end of the four week when there is a small deal out, by the beginning of the week five probably you should feel that you are able to perform all training and not die because you are breathing uh, hard because when you start to do um, for me it's a very good test um, when um, we work with the athletes on the middle of the preparation and we started to do complexes, uh, clean plus front squat plus to jerk, I usually test uh, how he react on this load because it's okay if he will not leave, it's fine. The question, he will not leave because he breathing too hard, he will not live because he cannot do front squat after two cleans or he cannot jerk because uh, he is not able to endure it during the deep mm. and drive. So as a coach, you can analyze this and give a feedback. What is the issue? Um, strength endurance, uh, technical uh, preparation because of the... Uh, uh, overload of the neural system on, or he is just bad in technique. Mm -hmm. And probably there is no like one strict answer uh, how he will define this. But I believe that we do preparation to become better. Mm. And, and sometimes depending on the life obstacles or uh, anything else, we can see that, okay, during this week, our athletes is worth nothing. So probably just three days don't go to gym probably he has a love story and he <laughs> needs to reschedule his uh, life a little bit it also happens but uh, the thing that we need to see as a coach is that he is constantly i mean not every day by but week by week mm -hmm. every two weeks he's showing some kind of progress i think i think that was a fantastic answer and i think it to kind of round it out as you said at the start of it Performance is ultimately ultimately the assessment in the 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 guide of if it's working or not, and and that's not performance like oh well on a random day I should be able to PR my snatch. It's more so is my technique holding up at heavier weights? Am I able to handle higher rep complexes and feel like I can keep going and not feel so winded? Um, is it that I'm able to handle an entire training session and feel like I could do more because the you call them general preparation. I would call it like a work capacity phase, um, but that work capacity is improved and you're able to tolerate a lot of training that you're going to use later to get better. And, and then to, to kind of finish that, I would say, you mentioned there are workouts where you need the stimulus, like you need the work uh, because the work ultimately is what drives the adaptation. Um, sometimes people won't feel great or, or they feel a little off. So they'll just go home and, and, you know, Sometimes that may make sense, but ultimately like the work is the thing that gets you better at the work. 
So if you don't do the work, you can't expect, expect to be better at it. So um, ultimately, the, the main idea is to do enough work over time to get better. If your performance is going up, you're doing enough work. If it's not, you're doing the wrong type of work or the wrong amount. Uh, so I think that was a fantastic answer, Sergey. So let's let's round this out and talk about how we peak the snatch in the clean and jerk. Uh, Josh, um, due to um, the obstacle that your English is better than mine, you <laughs> explained everything very good. Thank you for Thank help. You. <laughs> uh, so um, peaking and uh, competition style and uh, high intensity. I believe that uh, when people are in love uh, with weightlifting and it's a passion for them and uh, these kids finally want to um, lift heavy, I believe that um, competition period is the most um, uh, the best period to have fun and finally to lift heavy because uh, I hated the um, week after five to week eight, nine when our coach tested us and pushed us to do Six, six reps max it was killing because he said i believe that everyone can do six reps 75 percent but i will be happy as soon as you will do six reps um 85 uh, percent and he was super happy when you was able to do six cleans and then one jerk or mm. one uh clean and then six jerks 85 wow. percent and this stuff that we never program uh for normal people because after this so mostly after fourth uh rep you uh, are ready to give all your phones all your money <laughs> everything please let me go but after rep number four everything uh, actually weightlifting start and this is the time to show how good you are yeah so now uh, the idea first of all we need to understand and to repeat for uh, athletes the idea of competition cycle the idea of competition cycle is not to lift your best kilos uh during this period mm. the idea of this period in my opinion is to make sure that on the day of the platform you will be ready to do your prs and you will be confident because you did a lot or enough mm. enough of kind of heavy lifts during the competition um during the competition period because um for some athletes for some athletes you need to try more uh, during the training for girls very often you need to try more on the training program but there are a lot of athletes that can lift kind of heavy uh, without going to 100 plus percent during the training uh, during the competition period and they will be uh, ready to lift prs on the platform so it very depends but um anyway uh, you can see here that there is a, a lot of green zones where sets are optional and they are optional depending on how you feel. Are you ready? If you feel yourself uh, confident, but uh, as I said, the blocks are shorter. So just less of exercises, less. Um, and uh, as we spoke before, the general uh, amount of volume is 25, 27, 30% less of reps we almost uh, don't have uh, complex exercises. We almost don't have so-called weightlifting bodybuilding. And uh, most uh, things that we are focused on, it's the uh, class classic exercises, uh, exercises that will help to test your uh, physical and mental strength. And uh, exercises almost perform, almost every exercise is performed for double or single reps mm. because uh, the quality of neural impulse, it's also the thing that we can train and that we should train. And if we are like seven, eight weeks away from the competition, you can... Um, you can allow your neural system to spread your uh, neur uh, neural um, possibilities to work for three or more reps. Mm -hmm. But when you are as close as you get to the competition, you have to teach 
your neural system and adapt to your neural system that you must give everything in one rep. Mm -hmm. And this is also a skill because it's a different uh, mental approach to keep in mind that I must distribute the force for more reps or I must give everything only in this rep. And this is also a part of mental preparation when uh, we work for singles. And uh, actually competition cycle, it's a period when we need to train this. I'm not saying to lift uh, go PR every um, session, but to work for singles, even on the lighter weights without straps and focus to do a good one uh, explosive rep. It's a one of the most important goals over these four weeks. Well, and you explaining that, the way I think about it is when you're in the like work capacity or preparation phase, it's like you're riding a bull. So you're just trying to hold on as long as you can. When you have a complex that's a pull, a snatch, <laughs> an overhead squat for a triple, I, I'm just trying to hang on for dear life and make sure things don't fall apart. In, mm -hmm. in the competition period, I'm riding a racehorse. And I, I know how to direct it. I know how to make it go faster. I know how to make sure that we, we shave off as much time as possible. And we're, and we're very deliberate about it. Um, and that's with a lot of singles. It, maybe we do some time dress stuff just to make sure, you know, when we're competing, generally at local meets, you kind of get a spread where the lighter lifters might take more singles back to back. Um, you kind of get a, a, a bunch of people in the middle and then mm -hmm. the heavier lifters are going to have to follow themselves too. So we'll mm -hmm. do a lot of stuff on a clock, on the minute style, on the 90 seconds. Um, but as you said, it's almost all singles, maybe some doubles, maybe like a triple at 60% if we just need a little bit of, of work. Uh, but it's always quality. So uh, to kind of kind of reiterate, it's like with those big complexes, it's just just let me make it through it and let me not look too bad. And then with this this stuff, it's all quality first. Uh, feeling the movement, dialing in the technique and allowing all of that work to express itself. But it's not like developing the work at that point. Would you say that's kind of correct? Yeah, totally agree. Strongly agree. And uh, the um, idea of uh, accessory exercises, I mean, not accessory, strength exercises, I mean, pulls and uh, squats mm -hmm. in this period are not... Um, uh, for building something, it's more than it's more for toning. It's more for giving neural impulse, and you go uh, up, 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 done. And uh, this is how we learn and adapt or our muscle system to uh, focus all resources to go for one rep max. So this is the goal. Uh, approach when to go heavy. I mean, to try to hit your PR or to try to hit your 100%. I know that they're very different in the, in the different schools. But uh, the thing that I try to follow and give the general advice for average level of athlete is to try to uh, peak with the clean and jerk up to uh, 16, 21 day and to peak in a, a snatch up to seven, uh, 10 days, because usually recovery for the clean and jerk is way longer. But uh, the thing that I saw with my eyes in uh, Tashkent now that Lasha uh, competed on Friday and on Tuesday, he did uh, 200 uh, kilos snatch no feet for doubles wow. but but once again but once again let's count i i we, we need to calculate so this 22 so it was less than 90 percent mm -hmm. it was 88 percent but let's keep in mind honestly that 225 it's not 100 percent right. actual because even a year ago guys told me that he did 230 from the blocks with the straps so when people said oh my god he did 200 no feet let's keep in mind that it's 87 percent 88 right. 
for most of people they will never deadlift 200 it's okay <laughs> but for but for lasha it's just a but it's just a different type of numbers so, so so what would so you're what you're saying is that um how close you are to your ceiling like your performance ceiling that dictates the weights so for ex a good example is i just had a girl in yesterday who um she's transitioned from crossfit getting into weightlifting we were doing some on the minute work she looked really good uh we worked up to a pr and it was like very obviously under her limit um it moved fast it looked like relatively good technique held up so it's not her true max it's just the most she's ever done um so there's a difference between being able to do more and then being at like a true max where you know your stand up out of the clean is like a five second rep your eyes are going to pop out of your head and then to jerk it you have to call to your god to you know send down special powers basically i think it's a happiness for a coach to find an athlete who will be able to actually to go to his uh natural uh, i mean to his uh, potential max right. it's a happiness to work with uh, such a type of people because sometimes it's a technical limit sometimes mm -hmm. yeah. a mental limit and so on and so on and sometimes it's together or strength limit uh, and uh, um, usually and uh, there is also a problem when people start to calculate like from blocks with the straps and so on and so on mm -hmm. we uh, and when you start to calculate with the from the actual competitive result, percentages mo moves lower, you work in the more comfortable way, and this is how you build the preparation. Because uh, very often I can hear from people, they calculate uh, uh, clean and jerk for, uh, when they once did a jerk behind the neck from the rack, and once in their life they did a clean with the blocks from mid tie. And they uh, combined it together and they said, this is my clean and jerk. I said, okay, show me this on the platform, <laughs> even, even, even on video, but yeah, they, this will work. Well, that's, that's, what's also difficult, you know, just for the coaches listening that, you know, if, if you start working with someone and they're like, well, I haven't hit this lift in a year or two years, or, you know, I'm coming back from some, some minor injuries or tweaks and like their max is actually so much lower than what they've done you have to try to reestablish all of that and again that's where like the work capacity general preparation phase comes in exactly you, you get them into weightlifting shape so they can weightlift and luckily you have a lot of flexibility with the 60 and 70 percent lifts and, and then once you start creeping up over time maybe you realize okay we're pushing a little too hard we'll pull back but if you go by the numbers it gives you more wiggle room um and then allows you to make changes instead of just saying like well uh we're going to do a one rep max or a three rep max or a five rep max and that's going to tell us where we're at because that doesn't tell you too much um so sergey i thought i think this has been fantastic and and i don't know if you have anything to add um I, it's very informative again shows me where i need to kind of work on what i'm doing but uh what would I guess what were what would be some of the thoughts you would leave people with after going through all of this? So to con uh, to conclude, uh, uh, my opinion and the opinion of uh, our team that uh, we are lucky to live in the period of weightlifting developing when weightlifting became not only sport of uh, professional guys that spend uh, time in the training camp and uh, live as a professional athletes. We are luckily, uh, lucky to see the people who made um, a weightlifting as a part of fitness industry. Mm. And I'm happy about this because I remember when 10 years ago, our old fashioned coaches uh, said, okay, we will do a meet, but we will invite the CrossFitters because they all are stupid. They will <laughs> live with the ugly form and they will bring a lot, uh, a lot of people that will eat and shout. And, and they said, come on, this is about the competition. When you lift in the perfect form, a lot of kilos and you do, and then with the um, uh, strict face go away, it's boring to see um, uh, 50 people like this. It's fine if it will be three of that, but it will be nice if we will see 30 other people ugly running from one uh, corner of the platform <laughs> to other, 
other people will do pictures and they will share. This is how soccer became popular. Everybody plays soccer in every uh, um, corner of the street. And they also play ugly, but they play, uh, they play and they're having fun. And that is why, so, and that is why I love this period of time because a lot of people start to do weightlifting or use part of weightlifting exercises as a part of their fitness routine. And that is why my opinion and my conclusion that if we look at on the mass weightlifting from this angle of perspective, there is no sense to run for the crazy kilos. Mm. Because um, I remember when we started to do seminars with uh, Alexei and we uh, said hello to each other and said, "Why? Wh what is your goal? Why did you come to the seminar? He said, uh, because I was doing CrossFit and then after two shoulder surgery, I decided to find out how to lift properly. Mm. So I believe that if you're doing weightlifting for yourself, for health and for fun, there is no sense to train the way you, that you will uh, uh, kill yourself. It's okay when it hurts after the sore. It's okay if, to, uh, if it hurts, your muscles hurts because they did a new work and you feel that your position bring your muscles or your body to the a little bit different form. But my opinion, it's stupid to train for nothing and paying money for this, mm -hmm. but by the end, do a surgery on your wrist, on your elbow and on your mm, uh, shoulder. So my opinion that uh, for now for us as for coaches, it's... Uh, uh, weightlifting is the tool how to teach people to move mm. smartly to be stronger, to be more flexible to be more explosive, fast and uh, to enjoy of lifting heavy weights and to enjoy first you need to learn mm. so this is my point of view on all this community that we have now yeah, well, like you said, you kind of mentioned in the middle of the, the conversation, a distribution for reps. And I think it's kind of a, there's that, there's that curve that exists for almost everything or, or everything, you know, possibly in life, uh, yeah. in life. And with weightlifting technique, it's the same thing. It's like the ends of the, the curve give a lot more meaning to the entire curve itself. So like the, the very bad of the technique allows you to appreciate the very best of the technique. And the very best of the technique gives gives you meaning when you're in the middle of the curve because you can work towards it. Um, you can try to refine the small details. So it's like it's 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 the everything in between the worst and the best that gives meaning to everything in between the worst and the best. Um, so like you mentioned, I'd rather watch you know someone who is snatching 25 kilos and you know just won't be able to ever do more than that, but they're trying their best than everyone who looks perfect and is snatching 170 kilos because again like the variation is what gives richness to uh the rest of it so so I, you know i'll give you a good very uh interesting statistics that we did a research about the social media mm -hmm. that uh like ugly lifts brings more reviews comments and share than perfect heavy big yeah. lifts and as a conclusion it says that that technique develops with lifting and make it more popular mm -hmm. than alasha 225 because he looks like a god but who who uh, and um, mostly um, um, the admiration of this lift will be more for people who understand mm -hmm. yep but if you don't understand and you see skinny guy running away with the barbell, <laughs> he, uh, this lift will will get more share. And, and that's it. <laughs> and Sergey, I don't know if you remember the video of Maddie Rogers. I think she was taking a snatch off the blocks or something. And she threw the bar forward and it rolled through a glass, uh, a gl like a glass yes, wall. Yes, yes, yes. I'm sure yes. that video has so many more views than any other weightlifting video that exists. And it's not because it was a great lift. It was because she broke a huge glass wall uh, and ended up on the floor and was just absolutely petrified by what, what had just happened. Um, so I think, I think that's, that's a good sign. It means that if you're not a great weightlifter, you can still be 
Instagram famous, you still have an opportunity to do that. And, and you have uh, more opp opportunities to become better. Exactly, exactly. Uh, and Sergey, so we looked at one of the programs that you helped write. If people are interested in either checking out more of the program, seeing what else you have to offer, where can we direct them? Uh, it's a website, tarakti.com. We are, we have a lot of stuff and we are always open to people because uh, we have uh, a lot of question and uh, every day more and more about how to live, what to do. And uh, we are trying to answer everyone. And I think it's one of the, our biggest mission to explain people what is lifting. And uh, I and Alexei were almost always in contact. I, I cannot promise that I will reply instantly, but I don't have in my direct me messages message that I don't reply. So I love uh, a stupid question because uh, uh, I know that if people don't know, they want to know. Mm. And uh, if, I, if I can help, sometimes I said, I don't know. But if I can help, I will do it because I love our sport. Yeah, awesome. Uh, well, I, I really appreciate your time and, and you doing this with us. I think this can act as a resource, not only for, you know, the next week, month or six months, but I think this can act as a resource for the next few years for people who want to revisit it, think about their programming. And the last question, and I think this is a good question for people who write programs, how long would it take you to write something like that, that we just went over? So uh, it uh, looks, um, it has a few stages. So mostly I would say uh, I, I would, uh, if I would uh, sit in the chair and I would spend for this time, probably it will took uh, a few days, but mostly it take about a few weeks mm -hmm. because uh, uh, when I did this program and uh, version one, and then I re rescheduled because we got, a lot of questions, a lot of asking how it works, why. So I changed uh, something mostly. First of all, I build a template in my head. Mm. And first I wrote it in the paper and I show it to Alexei. Sometimes he and uh, we um, discuss all the idea. After this, I, as I said, I write a plan, calculate it, calculate it with the zones. And the most time usually takes the calculation. Mm. Because when you work with an athlete or with the actual team, um, you have a, um, let's say, control point where you believe the team should show this or that result. And you have a, a like a general idea of planning and then you plan each week and you see how team react or your couple of athletes. And if I understand that they're, uh, they're still good, I can give more volume. But then I understand, okay, they suffer for, for three weeks. The next week should be recovering on tapering. And I play all coach, all athletes that I coach here in Ukraine. I plan week by week, but I have to play it in my head. Mm -hmm. But when I need to give 12 weeks, usually it takes time to calculate then i again show everything to alexei and i um, said that you should ask me as much question as you can why this why you put here a ladder of lifts why you uh, put here a complex because it's the period not for complex so he yeah. asking me a question and sometimes it helped and after this we give this program we have a international testing team guys from Australia, from Brazil, from United States. Some of them are coaches, some of them just athletes. They know, don't know programming. And I give them this in Excel and I said like, what do you think? And because we do this for people, we need uh, to have a, a normal people's question because mm. sometimes they also help us to clarify. Because some, some things that very obvious for me, like I said, if I put power snatch 70%, six sets for two reps, I understand that I must do three sets for barbell, then two sets for 50%, and maybe two, three, six for six for 60%. Some people, they just do 70 after entering the gym. Uh, <laughs> so mostly it can take like my job uh, up to two weeks, and then maybe a month to design 
uh, mm. to put and to check all the numbers, then to put inside of this program um, video links, then to do a landing page, then to do a chain of email marketing to connect everything. So mostly we produce program up to like this commercial program up to two and a half months. Mm. Wow. From the idea that I start till the day that we release it. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's intense, and and I guess that just uh, reassures people that they're getting a good product if they purchase uh, one of the programs from from you and from Tarakti. Um, so I'll I'll be sure to link uh, all of that stuff down below. I'll be sure to direct people to your social media, uh, you know, Alexi's social media, and, and get some traffic going your way. Um, if people want to follow me, you can also follow the links down below to my social media and whatever else I have to offer. Um, Sergey, once again, uh, thanks for, for doing with this with me. Hopefully people really appreciate it. And guys, we will catch you next time on another video uh, on the Philosophical Weightlifting YouTube channel. Peace. Peace and love. <laughs> Thank you.